In question 8, we're doing a contingency analysis on a 2x2 two two table, and we're testing whether the type of car, foreign or domestic, is independent of union membership. So members of union. So you see the grid uh, below in the table, and we want to test for the alpha of 0.05. Okay, the degrees of freedom. So if you recall, this is yet another way, uh, yet another way of calculating degrees of freedom. It's rows, number of rows minus 1, times number of columns minus 1. So in this case, in a 2 by 2, so we would have rows, rows minus 1, columns minus 1, and we have two of each, so we have end up with 2 minus 1, times 2 minus 1, and that's going to be 1. So if you have, well, that's kind of hidden there, 1. If you have a 2 by 2 grid, you're always going to have degrees of freedom of 1. So it only uh, is different, of course, if you have a different number of rows or columns. But in this case, we've got degrees of freedom then is 1. Degrees of freedom equals 1 for a 2 by 2. And then we want to identify the chi-square value for alpha of 0 0.05. All right, so let's take a look at that here. So if we uh, want to move over here, Uh, alpha of 0 0.05, if I can circle it, and then degrees of freedom of 1. So our chi-square of alpha will be 3.8415. Okay, and this is similar to goodness of fit, where we're going to then calculate a chi-square value to test against this. So we are going to go and find out the observed and the expected frequencies and calculate the difference between them and then say, well, how big is the, is the variation here and is it bigger than this value or not? So it's kind of the same concept here um, as we just did in problem 7. So let's take another look here at this table here and I've got this repeated here so we can figure out uh, what it is we need to do. So there's, there's uh, in a 2 by 2 there's not too many, but the bigger the table, the more calculations you'll have to do. But there's kind of three sets of, of things that we're going to be doing here. And the first thing you'll notice is the difference from the table is that I've added totals here. Okay, so we've got totals. And if you recall in the binomial problem, we just multiplied our our total number of samples by a probability and to de determine the expected value. It's slightly different in, in the uh, contingency analysis in that we will take the margin values, so let's just do this first one, the 625 total and then 195 total. We will multiply those by each other, 195 times 625, 195 times 625, and then we will divide that by the total sample size of 990. So if we do that, we then say one, uh, 195 times 625 and divide that by 990. And as a result then, we get 123 123.1061 okay or we could just say 123.1 is probably close enough um, and then from there I mean you could continue to do this and say well we'll do this here for this one we'll do 795 times 365 795 times 365 divide by 990 and we get then 293 293.1061. Now, you could do the same thing. You could then say 625 times 795 divided by 990, or you could subtract 293.1061 from 795 to get this value up here, which would be 501.8939. Better make this bigger so I can actually write 509, or what did I say? 50. 1.8939 and then here if you said 365 times 195 divided by 990 
you would get 71.8939. Okay, so this is a bit of a mess here because uh, I can't write very well with my with my hand. But these are our expected values, right? So if in these in these uh, with these results here, with these totals, we would expect to see the 123.1061 and 71.8939 and so forth uh, as a result here. These are the expected values. And then, for our test statistic, then, we will take the observed. So in this case, we have, let's do this first one here. If I can get the pen back. Okay, 155 and 123.1061. So we would say observed using this equation right here, we'd say 155 minus 123.1061 squared over our expected value 123.1061. So we need to do this four times and our result then on this first one, the result of that is going to be 8.2630. 8.2 Six three zero eight point two six three zero, and then we would do this three more times now, and then sum those up. So we get fourteen point one four eight nine. Okay, and I did that by forty minus seventy one point eight nine three nine squared over seventy one point eight nine three nine, and then. On this next one in the upper right, I get 2.0268. need to make this bigger again. We get 2.0268. And then we get 3.4705. 3.4705. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit here. And again, these results, just to, just to recap, because I probably went through that kind of quickly, this first one is this 155 minus 123.1061. This second one is going to be 40 minus 71.8939 squared over 71.8939. And that's the 14.1489. And then... Continuing on, we would say the uh, 501.8939, oh, excuse me, uh, let me go back and look at the table up there, 470, let's clear that. If I can find the eraser. Okay, this third one is going to be 475 minus 501.8939 squared over 501.8939. And that result was going to be the 2.02, uh, 2.0268. And then for our last one, it's going to be 325 Was that right? 325? Take a look there. Yeah, 325. 325 minus 293 point 1061 squared over 293.1061 and that's going to be the 3.4705 3.4705 so that's uh, I know that's uh, probably more than you wanted to know um, but just so everybody's clear where we're getting those results so what we're going to do is then take take these results here and we're going to add them together to come up with our chi-square test statistic. So when we add all of those up, we get 
1, we'll say, as a rounding, 27.91. All right, now, if you can read this, here, this was our chi-squared of alpha. So 27.91 is, is quite a bit bigger than 0 0.38415. And so let's take a look then at our problem back to our original questions here. So because our test statistic was much larger than our chi-squared of alpha, we will reject the null and conclude that there is a relationship between car type and union membership. That is, that is not independent, right? So what type of car, domestic or foreign, is connected with union membership in this case? More union members, I believe, are driving domestic cars than foreign cars. That's how you would interpret that result.